What's indeed going on to Rome's? Uh, the Minnesota Fighting Vikings are ready to shock the world, but not ourselves. Mm. They're going to whip the 49ers' ass tonight, uh, but things need to go pretty perfectly. Uh, and the Vikings uh, should and could take care of business tonight on prime time, even though blah, 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 Kirk Cousins, Monday Night Curse, what, whatever. But here are nine. Nueve uh, Vikings who need to bring their A game uh, today. Now, yeah, it's you could just say, well, Darisaw needs to play well, and Daniil Hunter, and Harrison Smith, and Jordan Hicks, and uh, Brian O'Neill, all, all that stuff. Yes, 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 yes. But these are guys that maybe have been underachieving, question mark, and definitely need to bring it uh, on Monday night. First up, Kirk Wood, Jerome, Zico Cousin. Now, I understand people are going to be like, well, Kirk hasn't really been underachieving this year. Yes. That is correct, but I don't I don't care about the Monday night narratives, whatever, but Kirk will have to make some big-time throws against his old dude, Shanahan, tonight, and the Niners' defense is tough. I mean, Steve Wilkes picked up right where D'Amico Ryan's left off. Uh, they're first in def- uh, for, uh, their defense is number one in points. They're number three in yards allowed. Things are going to be tight. Things are absolutely going to be tight, but Kirk has to step up and be a hero. He's got to exercise the demons and take all of those narratives and just like put them in a little box, light that box on fire, and then uh, leave the country. That, that's what he's got to do uh, tonight. Next up, number two, running back Alexander Madison. Now, Madison's been under fire a lot from the media, from the fans, and to a degree, rightfully so. Uh, he's leading the league in drops. Uh, he's only averaging 3.8 yards per carry, and you know he got that two-year deal and replaced Dalvin Cook, and he hasn't been overly efficient this year. Uh, running backs over the last two games have not crested 100 yards, and he's got to make a statement. Like He's got to take all of that noise, all of the nonsense, all, all of the, oh, he can't do the job, oh, we can't RB1, all, all that talk. He needs to put it in uh, he needs to put it in a box, light on fire, and then leave the country. Everyone needs to do that, man. That's goals for in life for me. But he's got to have a statement game. Or Cam Akers. Cam Akers needs to step in. Uh, next up, number three, wide receiver Jordan Addison. Now, Addison thrust into the spotlight uh, since Justin Jefferson is out for uh, at least two more weeks with a hamstring injury. But he needs to be that wide receiver one. Don't care that he's a rookie. He's not a rookie anymore. And he needs to uh, show how he's got a great uh, nose for the end zone. He's, he's developing a quick chemistry with Kirk Cousins. And if Kirk has to take a couple deep shots, he has to attack all three levels of this defense. Addison's got to be that guy. He's got to get free. He's got to show his numbers to Kirk, and he's got to come up with big-time catches. And he's probably going to get Chavaris Ward all night. That's okay. He's got to show off that he's Hollywood. Also, show that he's the guy who made Caleb Williams. Caleb Williams not faring too great, uh, well, last two games, uh, without Jordan Addison. But uh, I feel like bright lights uh, is what Jordan Addison thrives under, and let's get paid. Let's have a big-time game tonight. Next up, number four. Uh, the offensive guards, Reisner and Ingram. So uh, Dalton Reisner filling in for Ezra Cleveland. Uh, Ezra's had him, having himself a pretty solid season. Uh, but Reisner, I mean, he needs to show that he's worth the hype. He's been in the building for a month. He's up to speed with the offense. He's back in game shape. Uh, and he needs to prove that, hey, I was worth the $4 million bucks. I was worth all of the hype and the hoopla uh, and all the Vikings fans uh, champing the bit to sign me this offseason. He needs to do that. And Ed Ingram. Ed Ingram has gotten better over the last couple of weeks, and in terms of gelling along the offensive line, yes. And plus, you could throw Bradbury in there as well because the interior offensive line is going to be under duress uh, a lot because they got Javon Hargrave, they got Eric Armstead, uh, Kinlaw is starting to not be so bad, Drake Jackson they kick inside sometimes. So, I mean, the Niners' defense is really damn solid. It's one of the best uh, in, in the league, and notably they're going to uh, specifically target Dalton Reisner, who hasn't had any uh, any offensive snaps this season to speak of, as well as Ed Ingram. They, they know. They just know that they're going to target and try to isolate him, uh, and they got to step up and do the best. Next up, number five. So, Hawkinson. I know that he's pissed off about Iowa this weekend, uh, but needs a channel that anger and turn it into aggression and yes he signed the contract he got paid with incentives he's going to be the highest paid tight end in nfl history he hasn't been living up to it and he has the talent to be a top three guy and not three uh, he has opportunity here to really silence a lot of the haters and the losers uh, and go from there. Uh, but four drops in the last four games, unacceptable. Also, that fumble to start off things against the Chargers, unacceptable. So he has a chance on Monday Night Football against a very good defense. Uh, yeah, Warner and Hufunga up the middle uh, to show up and show out. Like He has a chance to uh, silence all of the critics uh, in one fell swoop tonight. Next up, number six. 
Ivan Pace Jr. So Jordan Hicks has actually been the best linebacker for the Vikings so far, and Pace has been been good for a rookie. And yes, he's a UDFA, but uh, no one's a rookie anymore. I mean, we're almost halfway through the season. Guys have experience, and Pace. I mean, he's been really solid so far, but he needs to take it to the next level. Like he needs to live up uh, to that huge hype that you know the analytics is putting on him, the fans are putting on him. And yeah, this is gonna be a big game where they're going to run. Even if McCaffrey's fifty percent of what he is, uh, they're going to try to run, and also they're going to use Kittle a lot of the middle. So, I mean, Ivan Pace Jr., both in coverage as well as uh, tackling and run fills, as well as uh, when his number is called to blitz the quarterback, get after Purdy's ass, he's going to have to have himself a big game. And I I think first time on Monday Night Football, I I think he's going to put on a show. That's right, man. Uh, Next up, uh, number seven Viking, we need to step up tonight. Cam Beasy, tonight needs to be a movie. And and Bynum, respect, has been playing well all damn season long, but he needs to take it up to an, a, another level, too. And this uh, is part and parcel of they're going to rely on Kittle a lot. Without Debo in there, they're also going to try and run the ball, try and set up play action. And Bynum has been fen- phenomenal this year, sniffing out play action, uh, making sure he's not out of position, as well as sniffing out screens and doing the damn thing uh, in that regard. Uh, but he's got to step up or even more. Like, BZ has – he's been pr- – Frankly, he's been playing at a Pro Bowl level. We need all pro uh, BZ uh, tonight. Uh, and also, you know, Brock Purdy, even though he only has one interception on the season, he's third in the league in interceptable balls. So, like, he will serve up a meatball, especially uh, when he can't dump it off to Debo, when he can't dump it off to uh, McCaffrey. I think we're going to get our mitts on a couple of Purdy balls tonight. Uh, next up, number eight, Byron Murphy Jr. So, Murph's been sort of up and down. Uh, thus far this season. Although last week he did a solid job on DJ Moore, uh, but he's very familiar with the 49ers. The former Arizona Cardinal played against uh, San Francisco and Brandon Ayak twice a year, so that familiarity could certainly help the Vikings in this regard, and he's probably going to be traveling with Ayak, uh, so he's got to bring it. Uh, like Ayak is one of the more underrated receivers in the game, and without Debo, without McCaffrey, probably a lot more targets coming his way, uh, so Murph is going to have to step up and be a hero. Uh, next up, number nine, Edge rusher DJ Wanham. Now, they're, they're going to throw everything that they can at Daniil. Like, they're going to try to – they're going to shift things around. They're going to make sure that Daniil is always rushing from the strong side. And Wanham, you know, with Marcus Davenport out on injured reserve, DJ has got himself a, a big-time opportunity. And he stepped up great in the last couple weeks, had himself a scoop and score, uh, had a number of pressures, two sacks on the season. And, I mean, they're going to double Daniil, and, and DJ is going to have himself an opportunity to tee off on Brock Purdy. But, of course – I got time for one more. That's right. One more. Kevin O'Connell. So you could say that the Viking signature wins from last year are Buffalo and Indianapolis. Sure. But where's the game where the Vikings faced a quality opponent and just put the beat down on someone? Hmm. I'm, wa- I'm, I'm waiting for it. Like where's the Vikings 40 to six type game? Is tonight going to be the night? I understand San Francisco is still tough, even uh, with those major injuries. I, I I fully understand that. But I feel like the Vikings, even without Justin Jefferson, even without, without Marcus Davenport, are ready to whoop some ass. I really feel that. And Kevin O'Connell has got to get this team ready. Like, this is it. Like, this is Waterloo. This is the Rubicon. This is the Alamo. This is everything. There's nothing after this. Like, if the Vikings lose, they're probably going to go into seller mode and go from there. Like, this is the season. This is the Super Bowl, and as much as a Week 7 game can be the Super Bowl, this is it. And we, we need a near-perfect game from Kevin O'Connell, too. Managing the clock, you know, uh, scripting plays, uh, making adjustments uh, for a change, and hitting them on both sides of the half as opposed to just being inert, taking chances, uh, and getting after it. He, he's got to do that. He, he, like, he cannot be milk toast P.J. Fleck tonight. He, he can't do that. And I feel like in a lot of ways he's reverted. I mean, yes, winning covers up a lot of issues from last season, but I feel like there was a flow, there was a rhyme or reason to the way he managed the game last year. This year, not so much. And, yes, the Vikings have had fumbles and drops, but Kevin O'Connell's game management has been a major issue for the Vikings that no one seems to want to talk about. So Kevin O'Connell needs to step it up as well. So that's it. That's it. That's nine. Well, ten. 
like usual. Uh, Vikings who need to bring their A game tonight for the Vikings to shock the world and beat the 49ers on Monday Night Football. Uh, let us know your thoughts and our thoughts in the comment section below. Subscribe for Daily Vikings Takes. Want to support the work? Put a little something in the bed, but until next time, Skull Production Value. <laughs>